In this lecture, we will talk about the SQL output command. When we write our code, very often we want to make our code more interactive. Also, there are occasions on which we need to do auditing. Let's see how we can use the output command to make our code more interactive and for auditing purposes. The output command is used together with insert, update, and delete statements. When insert, update, and delete statements are running, SQL Server maintains two memory resident virtual tables, inserted and deleted. When insert statements are running, the new data we just inserted is kept in the inserted table. When delete statements are running, the data we just deleted is kept in the deleted table. When update statements are running, the old data is kept in the deleted table. The new data is kept in the inserted table. These two virtual tables, inserted and deleted, are in scope as long as the related insert, update, or delete statement is running. Let's look at some code. We want to create a demo database. We name it demo output. Switch to the demo database. Next, we want to create a demo table with only three columns, product ID, product name, and list price. Let's populate the demo table with some data. We are getting the data from AdventureWorks 2008 R2. We will use insert into. Let's do it. Okay, we have set up the demo environment. Now let's see how we can use the output command. First of all, we want to use it with insert. Pay attention to where the output command is located. It's located between insert and values. Also, with insert, the inserted table is used. We want to insert a row into the demo table. The values are here. At the same time, we want to display the new data on the screen. 
Let's do it. We can see the new data we just inserted. This makes our code more interactive. Next, we want to use the output command with update. The output command is located between update and where. Pay attention to both deleted and inserted are used. Deleted has the old data. Inserted has the new data. We want to update a row and display the data on the screen. Let's do it. We can see supergroup was updated. The old price and the new price. This makes our code more user friendly, more interactive. Just for comparison, Let's run the update statement without using the output command. Without the output command, the feedback we got from SQL Server was when row affected. It's not very user friendly. We can use the output command with delete. Again, pay attention to where the output command is located. It's located between delete and the where. With delete, the deleted table is used. We can see the data we just deleted on the screen. We can also use the output command for auditing purposes. Let's create an audit table for demo purposes. With this audit table, we have product ID, name, old price, new price, and the action. We also have a primary key for the audit table. Let's create it. Now, we want to use the output command with insert. We have 
two output clauses in this example. The first output command will put data in the audit table. The second output command will display the data on the screen. The output commands can be in any order, but they must be properly located. In this example, the output commands are located between insert and values. We also specify the action. The action could be insert, update, or delete. Let's run it. Let's see what we have in the audit table. We can see the data we just inserted in the audit table. Also, the action. The action was insert. Next, we will use the output with update. Again, we have two output commands. One will put data in the audit table. The other one will display on the screen. Again, output commands can be in any order, but they must be properly located within the update statement. They are located between update, set, then where. To be more specific, the output commands are located between set and where. Let's run it. Let's see what we have in the audit table. Now we have two ropes with different actions. Next, we want to use the output command with delete. Also, two output commands. One will put data in the audit table. The other one will display on the screen. The output commands can be in any order, but they are located between delete and where. We also specify the action. Let's run it.
Okay, let's see what we have in the audit table now. We have three rows, different actions. The audit table can be used like any other table. We can do filtering using the WHERE clause. Before we complete this lecture, let's do some housekeeping. This concludes the lecture on SQL output command.